Well, my fellow readers, my friend Brevin has given me another comic book reading challenge that I have chosen to take him up on. Today I will be reviewing Wolverine Old Man Logan, a graphic novel that he told me was absolutely amazing with its story, art, and everything else. And after reading it for myself, I can say for certain that he was right. As a matter of fact, the film Logan was actually inspired by this comic. And by God, it was one of the saddest, most violent, and one of the most amazing movies I'd ever seen. So I expected no less from this comic book itself. Needless to say, I was not prepared, however, for just how grim the story is. How grim and bloody and just how sad this universe is. So this story essentially tells the tale of an older Wolverine living in a United States that has essentially become divided by four main supervillains after 50 years ago when all the main Marvel supervillains teamed up and took out a large chunk of the main Marvel superheroes from the Avengers to the X-Men nearly everyone has been wiped out with two main exceptions that are seen Wolverine and Hawkeye the Wolverine these days goes by Logan and has not popped his claws out in over 50 years. The reason for this was shown later. But the United States at this point is currently divided up into four kingdoms. And this was 50 years ago when it was divided between Abomination, Magneto, Doctor Doom, and Red Skull, who now calls himself President. Now though, in Logan's time, Abomination has been usurped by the Hulk, who now rules over California. Magneto got old and was killed by a new version of Kingpin, but Doctor Doom, as well as Red Skull, were still alive during this time. Logan currently lives out in Hulkland, paying tribute to Hulk's family, whom are actually the offspring of him, the original Hulk, and his first cousin, She-Hulk. Yeah, Hulk went complete sweet home Alabama, and his reasoning for this was because no one else would have been able to take him other than his first cousin. Which to that I say, yikes, first of all. So during this time, Logan now has to pay off the Hulk family to leave him and his family alone. However, because of the fact that he is currently low on funds, he actually calls in a favor from Hawkeye, who helps him do a trap who he helps do a transport job, cross-country, essentially. Throughout all of this, we really see just how grim this world is. We see the corpses of superheroes, such as Mjolnir, lying in a city. We see the dead body of Ant-Man lying around. And we even see the Red Skull later on in this book, carrying a trophy room with Iron Man's armor, Captain America's shield, and he's even wearing Captain America's uniform that he pulled off after he killed his longtime enemy. Not to mention, we actually find out Logan's backstory in this of just why he has not used his claws, why he continues to refer to himself as Logan and not Wolverine. We find out that during the attack on the X Mansion, Wolverine, due to the manipulations of Mysterio, the master of illusions, had wound up wiping out nearly all of the X Men at that point due to mind control. This absolutely broke Wolverine at that point. To the point that he was actually trying to commit suicide by having a train run him over. But of course, he did not die from this. And to his credit though, he states that while Logan still lived, Wolverine was dead. During this entire journey, we actually get pit stops from Hawkeye having to save his daughter whom was actually the daughter of Hawkeye, and whom actually has a grandfather in Spider-Man, or Peter Parker. To find that out was actually pretty cool, until we learned that Hawkeye's daughter was not the superhero like he was. Her main goal was to usurp the Kingpin and take over, over his land for herself. And that just really shows how much there is little hope for any superheroes in this universe whatsoever. The ones who remain have gotten old, and are just now in hiding trying to survive. 
And I cannot imagine the betrayal with Hawkeye here. With him finding out that his own daughter essentially tries to kill him at one point. And also, despite the fact that the man is now blind, Hawkeye still is able to kick butt and take names in this one. But what really drives me is Logan's backstory. When he explains to Hawkeye how he had essentially killed all the X-Men, and at that point just wanted to die. How he essentially killed Wolverine, and has never used his claws since. It's a sad story. But then, of course, we come to the final chapters, where Hulk has his family actually kill Logan's new family and leave them there in the house to essentially send a message. And because of this, this actually triggers Logan's longtime buried rage at that point. And he chooses to reawaken as Wolverine once again. And he goes on a personal crusade to kill Hulk as well as his entire family. And he does this with extreme and bloody precision. And even before all of this, he actually decapitated Red Skull with Captain America's shield and then used Iron Man's armor to try to get back to his home in order to pay off the Hulk family. But the only reason the Hulk actually did this was to get Wolverine to fight him because he had gotten bored being a supervillain warlord. Yeah, Bruce Banner in this universe is not a good person whatsoever. And it is actually implied that the radiation actually got to his head and drove him insane. Which would explain a lot, but it still makes him an absolute scumbag. Not to mention, okay, first of all, the Hulk in this series is absolutely terrifying. I mean, look at that image right there. If you saw that thing running towards you, what would be your first thought? My first thought personally would be, I'm about to die. This monstrosity is about to kill me. And in fact, when he's actually facing off against Wolverine, he actually knocks the crap out of Logan when he's in human form. Then as soon as he gets angry and turns into the Hulk, he actually eats Wolverine. Only to have Wolverine slice his way out of Hulk's stomach, killing him. Yeah, this comic does not play around whatsoever the blood and gore, as well as just how dark the story is. I cannot recommend this enough. In fact, let me show you some of the art style to really drive home just how insane the story is. Look at this, guys. I gotta tell you all right now, Mark Miller and Steve McNiven, they did not hold back with this comic when it comes to blood core, and absolute over-the-top violence and dark storytelling. I mean, look at this. When you see the Red Skull with Captain America's outfit, you can still see the dried-up bloodstains from when he killed him 50 years ago. Not to mention, watching both Hulk eat Logan and have Logan slice his way out of Hulk's stomach. Not to mention also Red Skull getting decapitated by Logan using Captain America's shield is just pure gory fun. I'm not even kidding with you guys. This has by far been one of my favorite Marvel Comics standalone stories thus far. And if you guys know any others like this, please let me know. I am dying to read more like this. Just this kind of grim, bloody fun, in all honesty. I mean, just look at that. That is absolute artistic masterpiece right there. So all in all, I have got to give Old Man Logan a solid 10 out of 10, with great storytelling, fantastic arc, and more importantly, just bringing more of an older, grizzled Wolverine, in my opinion. It just really goes to show him I'm no longer at his prime, but still able to take out bad guys with precision and rage is awesome. Not to mention just the kind of grim storytelling that this tales. Precisely the fact that the heroes have lost in this one and the villains have won. 
and yet still finding a way to fight back against the tyranny is fascinating. All in all, I highly recommend checking out Old Man Logan if you have not already done so. Anyways, you guys, thank you once again for listening. If you like this, please feel free to leave a like, comment, and or subscribe down under the video if you are interested in more of what I do. And if you have any other comic recommendations like this one, please let me know in the comments. I will give them a check and see if they will be worth to read as well as review, and you never know. I might actually review them in the future. Anyways, you guys, thank you once again for listening. This is Rambling Collector. Have a nice day.